land, but uh, she did uh, trial very impressively at Nowra of all places. I don't know if that means anything in the context of Inner Dominion, but I can pass on that she stepped away brilliantly by all reports. All right, uh, we'll go back to you, Dean, and, uh, and then give you the final word just before they get away, but probably two minutes or so from start time. Righto, boys, back to you shortly, but uh, they're at the start there at Albion Park. Now, Gary Young's got uh, a top chance in the next full field of 14. This is the first Inter-Dominion heat. The Trotters take pride of place first up. Heats again Tuesday. Grand final for the Trotters next Saturday night. Now, the 10 and going in with one there. It might be Cool Fortune. Take a moment and Special Force about to take their positions. Watch for last sunset on the front in the blue and white colours. One from the outside. Tamara Nightingale not quite right. Tamara Nightingale drawn at barrier two. Nine dollar chance on the TAB. Strand being drawn now for special force. Tamara Nightingale's one just holding up the start. Lieutenant still in with Tamara Nightingale. She's not quite 100%. And last sunset wants to backpedal now the favourite. Track cleared, should catch them, set, off. Last sunset, trotted away well. Actually, best away was the Bolter Rayleigh Flash, but Ambrose Pride and Queen's Rhapsody showing speed. Burns driving with urgency in the early stages, and Queen's Rhapsody's got high speed running into the first bend and sailed away with an early break from last sunset at Ambrose Pride, Rayleigh Flash, and Crikey Dick. Followed by Van der Pla, Lester Scott, then Cool Fortune. Gee, Special Force came away quite well. He's up just a touch worse than midfield. The speed is hot in the early stages. Five lengths away take a moment trotting steadily eight to majestic glory followed then by Howes Harold and Noopy Kiosk and Tamara Nightingale virtually refusing to go around is right out of play look at this charge by the mile Hurler he said I want the lead on last sunset he's going forward he's going to cross Queen's Rhapsody they trotted the lead time in 41.4 they're spread over 100 meters but it's the favorite on top last sunset Queen's Rhapsody trails at second six away third Ambrose Pride six to Crikey Dick followed then by Van outside of Rayleigh Flash. Then came Lester Scott, three lengths away, Cool Fortune, tracked by Special Force and Take a Moment. They'd be giving this lead a 20 length start at the 1200 metre corner. And then at longer margins, we've got Majestic Glory, Howes Harold and Noopy Kiosk and Tamara Nightingale has been retired. First quarter of the last mile, trotted in 30.8. And Hurler, he's got all the aces up his sleeves. He's now backing off the tempo. Here come the back markers. First to go, Cool Fortune, tracked by Special Special Force in turn tracked by Take a Moment. They're getting into the race at the right time, but it's still Last Sunset controlling the tempo. Queen's Rhapsody second, third the outside, Cool Fortune got up there fairly rapidly, leaving Special Force on a limb three wide. Splitting runners Van der Plaar, Ambrose Pride, sixth over on the pegs. Take a Moment will track Special Force everywhere he goes, followed by Lester Scott. Then came Crikey Dick and forget about the others, they couldn't possibly feature. Down to the 600 metres they trot in the second quarter, was in 32 Two, five. He backed the tempo off Hurler. He to suit himself. It was a 63 three half. And last sunset trotting well. One length cool fortune. Queen's Rhapsody tucked in behind the speed third. He's about to stoke up special force for the supreme effort as they ran by the 400. Then came Van der Plaar and take a moment. Third split in 29 and three. Last sunset trotting boldly. Going like a winner coming to the bend. Last sunset by two. Queen's Rhapsody sticks on gamely. Cool fortune can't reach them. Then came Van to plus special force and take a moment but homeward bound if you're on the favorite last sunset i think you've got the cash queen's rhapsody's running a mighty race but last sunset is home and hosed hurler he's sitting like an ice man that he is last sunset won the first heat of the trot beat queen's rhapsody lester scott got up on the inside to run third followed by cool fortune van der Pla, take a moment and special force at longer margins crikey dick ambrose pride a long gap in the field how's harold rayleigh flash majestic glory noopy king Ask and Tamara Nightingale was retired soon after the start. New Zealander last sunset for Tony Hurley getting home from the New South Wales Mayor Queen's Rhapsody and Lester Scott grabbing third 784 there after the fifth, the first heat of the Inter Dominion Trotting Championship and the favourite two good. Last sunset 160, 120, 540 Queen's Rhapsody, 570 for Lester Scott. Right, we're about to head back to Ron Hawkswell now 
yeah. last two Miracle Miles. And I'm with Sam. You would think the back of Anahi is going to trail, which gives him a big Cornella chance. I just think at it again, Dennis Wilson, I know he's talking about sitting three fence, but pretty hard to imagine D Wilson doing that. He's not that sort of guy. If there's a chance to push off, and hey, it's only a lap and a half, there may not be a chance. If there's a chance, he'll do it as we see Holmes, DG. Getting to backable odds, I would say, at $1.60. Well, that's about what odds he is with the bookmakers on track, the 160. 460 at it again. It's a remarkable price, remarkable because he's shorter than that to win the final. Yep. Now, this is the first heat, but such is the importance of barrier draws, particularly over the sprint trip. I'll throw up one for you to watch here. Don't know and don't think it can get into the money tonight, number seven, John L. Sun, but watch it for it on Tuesday night. Drawn about two, I think, in the second round of heats, and he is a lovely sit sprinter. He, he'll be snagged back, he'll be near enough to last, but you watch him finish off the race strongly and uh, jot him down as one to be on Tuesday. Couldn't uh, argue with that form line because he's run at Mildura was an eye catcher too. That's right, they're just about set to go for pacing heat one of nine pacing heats in this series altogether. The favourite at 160 from Barrier 2 is Holmes DG. Look for at it again. He's second pick at 460 and he'll start from inside the back row right behind Backer Benahy. So the favourite in gate two, Holmes DG, here's David Fowler. Mobile is 50 metres away from the start. On the gate. Ready. Racing. Holmes DG beaten for speed at the start, clearly by Backer Benahy. In fact, he came out very ordinarily. Breedy's fella began okay, but then paced roughly soon after the start. And in a surprise on settling down, it's Backer Benahy in front. Lombo Repeater, driven with some urgency, dashes up on the outside and will have a crack for the lead. Holmes DG third early, and there's Cigar already up to fourth and at it again. He's away from the pegs, and he's up in fifth spot. Then a blazing star, Trois Frères, followed by Jack a Smile, John L. Sun, Holmes for Christmas. Second last hit the spot and Breedy's fella. Don't know what happened there but he's back to last. First quarter in 28 and 6. And the leader's Lombo Repeater from Cigar. Travelling third on the inside was back of Benahy. There goes Janelle Sun but Dennis Wilson said I heard you boy and he came out on at it again and forced John L. Sun four deep. Home for Christmas was able to pop off the inside but he's still strung up in traffic. A blazing stars racing erratically forcing John L. Sun very wide. Then Jack a smile Breedy's fella making some ground follow by home for Christmas and last of all hit the spot 10 lengths top end detail down the back 700 left to go second quarter 30.7 59.3 the half and in a race of surprises it's Lombo Repeater controlling the tempo one length but at it again is close enough if good enough back of Benahy third behind the leader he might need the hair testing sprint lane then Cigar Trois Frères Holmes DG's got work to do then Jack a smile Breedy's fella home for Christmas a blazing star hit the spot and John Elson whipped them in Third quarter, 28-2. Lombo repeater in front. Dennis Wilson stoking up at it again. He's strong. He's powerful and he's level with Lombo repeater. And he's travelling better. Then came back a Benahy cigar. Holmes DG and Trois Frères. Heads were turned for home. At it again in front. Lombo repeater won't give him without a fight. Back a Benahy sweeping fast along the inside. At it again. Back a Benahy. Lombo repeater. It's at it again. At it again. Won the first heat from Lombo repeater and back a Benahy. Trois Frères cigar. Holmes DG. G and Breedy's fella not far away. Then came Jack a smile, followed by John L. Sun. Hit the spot. Home for Christmas. A blazing star in 155 2. Well, the series favourite has gone home at it again and shortened up perhaps half a point from Lombo Repeater and Backer Benahy. 9 3 and 1 and 155 2 for the flying mile. At the box is now at Sandown. This is race six, semi final number three of the Sapphire Classic. Royal Zombers at 270. Proven gold at 280. Oscar and the promising Victorian Jerry Warra off 10 metres. Here's David Fowler. Avatar, Ragora. Jim Stone Lady is there with Timo, Jerry Warra. National interest, Sundon's Way and Mountain Gold. Last sunset won the first Trotter's Heat. He was an odds on favourite, this, but this bears a more open appearance. And we're just about ready to run. Final look at the TAB, number two, East Norlad, $3.70, starter said go, racing. East Norlad trotted away fairly, but Ragora, one of the locals, began fast, and Avatar was speedily into stride. There's a galloper soon after the start, Smart Evander, also lopsided, and Timo has also galloped his way out to the tail. On settling fully into stride, and taking the lead was Avatar. Ragora drops in to be second, third early, Bull DJ, East Norlad fourth. Travelling fifth, but three wide was Alba Foyle, but he's pressing forward. 
forward and those five runners scoot away by eight lengths. Travelling next was Jerry Warrer over on the inside road to victory. Then National Interest four lengths away to those back markers Sundance Way and Mountain Gold. Three lengths Gemstone Lady and eight lengths away then came as they travel down the back lopsided Smarter Vander and Timo on his worst behaviour is galloping again. The lead time was trotted in 43.1. Just over 1400 left to go and trotting well on the lead it's Avatar. Out by half a length on Alba Foyle second and he's breezing. Third behind the speed Rugora. He snore lad Butts got him into a good position, trailing 1 1 the favourite. Bold DJ, the grey, a length back fifth, improving steadily was Jerry Warra. Over on the inside came Road to Victory, then National Interest. They're out by five lengths. Next came Sundance Way, Mountain Gold, Gemstone Lady. That's the race. Tailed off were lopsided. Smart Evander and Timo completely tailed off. Travelling in for the bell. First quarter of the last mile, 30.1. Alberfoil is putting the acid on this leader avatar, and East Nor Lad is travelling sweetly. Third, right on their hammer. Ragora behind the leader. Then came Jerry Warra racing outside of Bold DJ. Chris Lang on national interest thinking about a move. Wherever he goes, Sundance Way and Mountain Gold will track him forward. And then came Gemstone Lady and forget the rest. Inside the 800. Second quarter in 30.1. Speed's been good. 60.2 the half. Still Avatar and Alberfoil are at it out in front. East Nor Lad. He's had a perfect run. He's about to come after the leaders. Then Ragora gone. Jerry Warris starts to run on. Bold DJ followed by National Interest Mountain Gold. McKendry is trying to loop the field out wide. He's coming with a fair run too. He went by Sundan's way. They travel off the back straight. 400 left to go. Third quarter in 29 and 7. Avatar, Alba Foyle, East Norland. Jerry Warris four wide. Five wide coming to the bend was National Interest and Mountain Gold is going to be six wide and we've got one big finish coming up. Look at them sweep around the home bend. Avatar and Alberfoil grabbed by National Interest. He trotted hard on the outside and Mountain Gold is after him. National Interest shooting clear. Sundance Way making ground on the inside. Oh, National Interest broke. Drama hit the line. Photo Sundance Way beat Mountain Gold, I think. Third home in the race was Avatar in the centre. Then National Interest. He was going to win and threw it away. Followed by at the head of the others, East Nor Lad, Alberfoil, Jerry Warra, Bull DJ, Gemstone Lady, Rugora, Smart Evander, Road to victory, lopsided and Timo is last. Hold on to your tickets. National interest was going to win. I could see Sundan's way cutting through on the inside thinking he was going to run second but all of a sudden national interest bubbled at the 50 metres. Stand by for the numbers. They're wide apart. 14's got it out wide. Mountain Gold. 14 Mountain Gold. Morris McKendry out wide has beaten number 13, Sundance Way, Mark Purden. And third in the race is number seven, and that is Avatar, Darren Pace. Well, what a sensation there. National interest going to win, not by a big margin, and all of a sudden, he jumped out. Well, not of his gear. He just uh, decided to uh, gallop at a very crucial stage. Yes, uh, Mountain Gold sweeping home to win from Sundon's Way and Avatar and uh, National Interest providing some of the uh, dramatics in the closing stages. Avatar. Dean, there's no bigger question mark next to any horse in this series than Courage Under Fire. We know what he's capable of. We've seen glimpses of it this season, but will we get to see the best of him in this series? He's got a very hard draw to overcome in this particular heat tonight over the flying mile. And if heat one is any indication, then uh, he is going to need uh, a fair bit of luck tonight. Brian Hancock, uh, not the start that you wanted to the series with Barry Draws. Your only chance to draw a good alley, and you've ended up with a shocker. Yeah, a few of us had, like Shaker has, and like had again, just won that race, he had a shock and draw. But, you know, if you worry about draw, draws... Uh, Adam, you'd go, you, you wouldn't come to the races, so let's play it by ear and put a bit of speed on and let's hope we get a crack at him. You know the following this horse has got. Uh, you've had first-hand evidence of that in the 12 months or so that he's been with your stable, or longer as it is now, but uh, what can you tell the fans? How, how are you on the score of happiness with him? I've never been happy, to tell you the truth, Adam. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not bullying about that. I've sort of really, really wrapped with him this year, cause, uh, this last eight weeks. He was sort of coming out from Melbourne. As I said, I was very disappointed. I never spoke to him for three days. But I'm really, I'm really excited the way he's come up this time. And I think the eight weeks he's had off for ten weeks, I think it's a bit of a blessing in disguise. Uh, there's no doubt he's new. 
But if I can get a, a good trip in the race, he'll be thereabouts. And if he don't do a good job tonight, I'll be very disappointed. You've done a few things with him uh, on the training track and at the trials that perhaps you've never tried with your horses before. You yeah, have. I, I sort of took him out to Bulleye a fortnight ago and he, uh, he all, but, all but broke the track record. And he, I never even turned the whip on him, you know. He just sort of done a great job and he felt good. I worked him here on uh, Thursday morning. I, I don't think he worked, felt as good as he did, you know. He's, and he was, that, he was that good this morning. I even free led him over 2,000 metres. He just wanted to take the edge off him, you know. He's, he's really sharp. Uh, everything says he's, he's, he's spot on, you know. So France is going to get across in front. Firstly, we'll go to you because you've been to the bookmaker's betting ring. Uh, we can uh, tell you the TAB, $2.40 for C New York. Comparable. Uh, pretty much exactly what they're prepared to bet you. No surprises that Courage Under Fire is the massive under. He's doubled those odds uh, on track with bookmakers. Safe and Sound is the second pick. Zagan off lease, uh, third in line. Senior York expected to find the front. He's the best tip by a mile from all of uh, the form students I spoke to. Expected to lead Zagan off lease with the trail and Safe and Sound possibly um, as good as uh, any horse in this particular race. Uh, he's not hasn't got the draw but certainly will be in the finish. I made them 2-1-9 but uh, more of an emphasis on the two. 2-1-9 two, nine the numbers from Sam in race eight Albion Park anything to add Mick yeah I like Senior York as well Adam I'm agreeing with uh, Sam here the tip from me though is bet against Yule Star I think he is the best horse on ability in this field even better than Courage Under Fire but really there's a concern with him so I would say I'm about to jump at the next at Wentworth Park it is Wentworth Park <laughs> Cannington against yeah, you. Yeah, well, if the Aussies were giving me an earpiece <laughs> and put me on level footing, I would have been able to hear where that was, actually. But Cannington, oh, my, my apologies to the Cannington Greyhound Club. All right, uh, those numbers we'll uh, have through with full dividends from Cannington very soon. Uh, not far away from a start here. They're milling around, soon to get into position. $2.10 for Sea New York. We had to chop you off there, Mick. What were you, uh, what were you rabbiting on about? <laughs> I was saying Yule Star I don't really like, and he is at 7.30 now. Question for you, Adam. You see more of Sea New York than uh, Sam and I do. Does he have the gate speed to just blast straight to the front he's not an explosive beginner i've got to say that he gets out of the gate above average but in saying that i don't think anything outside of him has the pace to hold to uh, get across and i think we're getting the impression off lees is not quite ready so he'll hand up let's talk about courage under fire what are we about to see can brian hancock possibly punch through behind a slow beginner like greek gambit or does he have to sit three wide the trip from where we've seen tonight it's virtually impossible to win I think what we're about to see is whether the horse has got any conceivable chance of winning the final. I, I have no idea what to expect from him. Ratings there for race nine at Wentworth Park coming up. Uh, no, in, no, uh, you're, you're sweet with me. From now. As long as you keep tipping five to one winners, you're sweet. A dollar ninety for your uh, better the night here. We silver boy from the red, Mick. Just going back to the uh, to the Trotters Championships. Last sunset now two point five to win the series and. Mountain Gold, 3.5 after that quite stunning win in the last heat. Yeah, staggering stuff, Mountain Gold. And we'll talk a lot more about those heats and the pacing heats on In The Gig tomorrow night. They're scoring up $2.10 C New York. Look for him in the, uh, well, the sort of maroon and yellow colours of Michael Langdon. Very American slant to those colours. And he's drawn in gate two. Courage under fire outside of the back row in the uh, white and light blue diamond. So we'll go up to David Fowler. Good luck if you've had a try. Well, one pace is he to go after this, the last on the card. On the gate, set to run, off. Franco Lotsmore actually put the head out first. There goes the New Zealand mare, Flight South. She is showing electrifying early speed and she went wash into the first corner and led. Hasn't she got some toe? Flight South out by two lengths early from Franco Lotsmore, Sea New York and Zoganoff Lease behind the leader. You'll start travelling up to fifth and Safe and Sound settles midfield the pegs, followed by Ben next and then came Friends for Life, followed by Greek Gambit drifting out of it. Hancock and Courage under fire a third last and three wide, followed by Drop Dead Gorgeous and last of all was the major bid. First quarter, 27.6. The leader was Flight South. Langdon on the favourite. See New York strides to second. Yule Star will be posted three wide, I'd say. Zoganoff lease behind the leader. Franco lots more the centre. And Hancock has weaved a bit of magic there. He's hopped onto the back of Yule Star, but he keeps going. He now takes the position outside the leader, so Courage Under Fire is left three wide. Then Franco lots more. Drop Dead Gorgeous. Safe and sound. He was on the pegs at one stage, now he's three wide trailing followed by the major bid, Friends for Life and Greek Gambit was last. Second quarter 30.1, 7 the half, 600 metres from the judge and it's flight south in front a half a length to Yule Star second breezing, third behind the leader, Zoganoff lease. Courage under fire has emerged to fourth, see New York's in bother there, fifth and trapped in traffic then Bancura next, safe and sound drop dead gorgeous, Franco lots more well back the major bid, 
friends for life and Greek Gambit was last. A third quarter of 29.2. You'll start put pay to flight south. Courage under fire still with a kick left. Then Zogunov lease. See New York not in the race. Homeward bound. You'll star in front and he went for home. Courage under fire is trying his little heart out. It's Yule star in front. Look at Courage under fire. Lifting. Post coming. He might have got there. He might have. I'm not sure. Courage under fire or Yule star in a beauty. Safe and sound third. Then came at the head of the others. Ben Kura next. Friends for life. See New York. Well back in the field, drop dead gorgeous, Greek Gambit. Second last over the line was Flight South. Franco Lotsmore is last and he's won. Number 12, Courage Under Fire. He's got there to the cheers of the crowd. Didn't he? Knuckle down hard, 6.30 and 2.20. Wow, he's got there. He's little, but he's big in every other department. Courage, will to win. And he's got a great driver too. So all the theories went right out the window. The outside of the second row, he couldn't win from there. We all said it, but he won. He's got the judges nod. Here are the official placings, 12, 10, 9. Courage under fire, Brian Hancock first. 10, Yule Star, Tony Shaw second. 9, safe and sound, John Justice third. 12, 10, 9, 1, 54, 9 the time. 154.9, slightly faster than the 155.1 that added again, ran the breakdown 27.6, 30.1, 29.2 and 28. He's right in there now. He's got top points as far as the grand final is concerned and the dividends go up. 12 Courage under fire, 6.30 and 2.20. 10 Yule Star, 2.10. 9 Safe and Sound, $2. We need the Quinella trifecta and the... The hot tips out here at Albion Park tonight is in the final race, the third heat of the Inner Dominion. Wally Walton expected to fire out and lead, not just win Matthew Gath, but they say, look for the record. Is this true? Uh, I wouldn't go so far to say look for the record. I'd be happy with... Um, a nice slow 157 yeah, win? Yeah, be run around about 2.8. It would be nice, but I think that would be a miracle <laughs> if that happened. But, um, yeah. The leader? Uh, it looks to me like he'd be the leader. You know, he's... He's very quick out of the gate when I really have to ask him to come out and I wouldn't, I wouldn't think nothing would cross him. There's been a bit of speculation about his trial at the Gold Coast. A few people said that he wasn't that impressive. Others said he went OK. I'll ask you. Oh, I didn't think he was impressive at all, you know, and he didn't feel impressive to me either. But he'd only been there about three days and he hadn't been eating or drinking well and it was just... Um, he's probably a little bit bound up from the trip as well and he um, certainly has come onto his tucker from that day onwards and... His work has been terrific since, you know, he's really loosened up in himself, his whole body, and I'm um, wrapped with him. How much luck comes... And Wally Walton is at $5.70, so it's tightening up. Pick Me Pockets at $7.70, Warman 95. Pocket Me 19, Persistency at $7.30. Cam's Place, Alec 96, 22 for Go Charles. Pacini, you can have 270 770 for Taylor Made Lombo, 147 show of hands, ouch at 33. And Shaker Maker is the favourite here at $2.30. Number 12. About to be boxed at Wentworth Park. Awesome Alice is now into $2.580 for eight never fail miss as we join Matthew Hill. Awesome. Runners in their pre race formation. Let's head back and join Adam Hamilton. Well, how can we follow an act like that win of Courage Under Fire in the previous? Uh, I didn't think he could win from the draw. Brian Hancock gave us the best possible leg up. It conceded he would need luck and he delivered. And boy, we've got a lot to talk about in regards to that particular heat on, in the gig tomorrow night. Uh, let's get down to helping you out to try and find the winner of the last. Firstly, I think number one, Wally Walton, is an absolute each way special. I just can't see how he'll miss being in three. And $4.80 looks pretty good value to me. But he has got a champion to beat in Shaker Maker, who is pretty solid on track as favourite, but a little better than the 2.30. Yeah, not much better, a little better. Um, I'm actually going to stick with you and tip Wally Walton. I'll, I'll point out that uh, in two heats of the paces so far, we've tipped the favourite and uh, we've been blown out of the water. So maybe going the other way... This time the favourite will come sailing down and win. He's a champion shaker maker, but the mile journey and the likely leader, Wally Walton, uh, I thought uh, might be able to beat shaker maker. Taylor made Lombo has the draw to be competitive. Mick Geeran uh, shaking his head. He's got nothing further to offer, so we uh, might head upstairs to David Fowler. Some of the other stars have delivered courage under fire and at it again. Can shaker maker follow suit? 220 years. You should know his colours. He's outside of the second row. Here's Chucky Fowler. <laughs> 
Last event. There he is, Shaker Maker. He's right up to his position. Starter hits the button, green light, they're racing. And from barrier four, Pocket Me left brilliantly. But is looking for the lead. He paced just a touch roughly. Can he cross Wally Walton? Yes, he can as they drive into the first corner. Pocket Me is going to settle third. Persistency caught three wide. Even deeper was Go Charles and just behind them, Taylor made Lombo. Then Warman, show of hands. Shaker Maker is fourth last, followed by Pacini Ouch. And Cam's place, Alec, went out to last. First quarter was covered in 27 point three they were fairly sizzling and the front runner is pocket me shows the way from pick me pockets wally walton positioned nicely third behind the leader and there's go charles grinding forward three wide war man goes up as well persistency next over on the inside taylor may lombo she's pegged away in midfield followed at the head of the others by pacini show of hands shaker maker third last and three wide he's got his work to do he's 10 from the leader and then came cam's place alec and ouch is last of all they leave the 800 behind them 29 for the second split the half in 56 7 and pocket me is going for the leg of his life in front he leads by length on go charles wally walton's had the cheap run behind the leader then came pocket me followed by taylor may lombo gavin lang on persistence he can ease to the outside when he wants to followed by pacini and then came at the head of the others cam's place alex show of hands ouch oh shaker maker he couldn't win from there surely he's second last and warman's last of all third quarter in 28.6 and this is going boldly in the lead pocket me wally walton's under the whip then go charles followed by pick me pockets taylor may lombo taking inside runs then persistency and shaker makers pulled out wide they're in the home straight though but went for the doctor on pocket me wally walton trying hard and then taylor may lombo pocket me kicking strongly first out first home pocket me beat taylor may lombo and wally walton shaker maker flying for fourth in persistency Show of hands, Cam's place, Alec Pacini. Ouch, followed by Pick Me Pocket. Second last, Go Charles. And five away, Warman was last in 153 and 8. Have they broken the track record? Let's stand by. They might have. They've broken the track record. What a night of harness racing. They've broken Thor H's 12 year record. Pocket Me has given a sizzling exhibition of pacing to come out in 153.76 officially. That will go as 153.8. Yeah, outstanding performance by uh, Pocket Me. Just got out and, and ran, and they couldn't get anywhere near him. Taylor made Lombo second, Wally Walton third, and Shaker Maker making up some late ground, but um, and he pulled out to make his run around the home turn, but he's wound up in about fifth spot. Last at Sandown's coming up in nine. Back to Albion Park, uh, joined by Sam Nadai and Mick Guerin once again, and we're about to review uh, what could only be des described as a rather interesting set of heats we've seen both in the trotting and pacing into Dominion Series here tonight. Sam, to you, we'll start talking about the paces. It kicked off on a, on a really interesting and exciting note when at it again was able to get away from the inside, and uh, really he owned the race from that point. Yep, the form students got it wrong. Maybe not overall, though, because added again now into 2-1 to one for the uh, for the series. Justified favourite, I think, and uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, on Tuesday night he follows through C New York. He's probably going to win that heat as well. Yeah, it looks that way, doesn't it? Uh, we'll talk more about C New York. It was very, very disappointing very soon. Um, over to Heat 2. Added again, certainly the star performer in his heat, without any doubt. Uh, over to Heat 2, and... Uh, here, well, it was a, an interesting sort of result, wasn't it, where uh, the crowd was absolutely jumping for joy at Courage Under Fire getting there in the last stride. And credit where it's due to Brian Hancock here. He maintained that he was delighted and that the horse was better than ever before, and his form suggested that tonight. He went fantastic and uh, probably well beyond the expectations of the three of us, I'm, I'm sure of that. I did uh, say before the series that you could probably only give Courage Under Fire a chance because he's trained by Brian Hancock. I'm not sure if that's the reason, but uh, we'll give him the credit.